What's cooking program nationwide coast to coast CRN Digital Talk Radio. Weekend edition, the nation's food, wine, restaurant, travel, and entertainment show. We're called What's Cooking. We're glad you're with us here every day, Monday through Friday, starting at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, and at various times throughout the weekend here with our weekend edition. You know, just to conclude, because we were talking about this last week, uh, I don't know if we ever had a final word on this, but uh, during Groundhog Day, the famed Groundhog Day, when uh, Puxatani Phil comes out of his uh, hole to check out to see what's going on, apparently... Uh, the uh, the groundhog did not see a shadow, and so it will be an early spring. And I think, is that happening already? Is early spring kicking in, Paul Stern? I believe so. We'll have to take it out, but uh, uh, if it is, we'll check it. We'll Again, we'll look into it. We'll check and see what's happening. Where are we headed? Hey, Mike, one of the famed wineries of Napa Valley. I don't know if there's a, a one that can be any more famed than Diamond Creek Winery. This, oh, yeah. This is one with uh, quite, quite a, 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 a interesting past. Uh, it, it all started with the... Uh, Kind of the vision of their uh, of their founder Al Bronstein, and uh, Al Bronstein took this uh, this legendary uh, the Cabernet House uh, to where it is today. And here to talk about it today is uh, well, Boots Bronstein. Boots, welcome to the broadcast. Well, thank you. We're honored to have you with us, and you know we 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 love you because uh, you and and Al were one of the very first interviews we did when we uh, started doing work in the Napa Valley. It was one of the great Napa Valley wine auctions, and we had started this program with the great chef Piero Biondi, and he had suffered a little slight uh, problem and had to excuse himself from the broadcast. So Paul and I got thrust into doing these live broadcasts from the Napa Valley wine auction back in the 90s, and uh, you and Al were there, and we didn't realize at the time what an honor it was to have you uh, on the broadcast tell us about this uh, this diamond creek vineyard and what this mountain fruit does you're one of the first people to really get going with this and one of the first wineries even up there in napa give us the history that what's the background of diamond creek well we're in uh, the northern part of napa valley we're in a little part of it called calistoga and we're on diamond mountain road and uh, we're the first uh, winery on uh, Diamond Mountain Road. We came up here from Southern California in the late 60s. Wow. And um, Al had decided uh, that uh, he wanted to retire from the business that he was in, and uh, he wanted to uh, make wine. And uh, the one he wanted to make was absolutely Cabernet Sauvignon. That's all he was interested in. What was it like there came, in the What was it like in the '60s? What business were you in, and what was it like to get out of L.A. and say we're going to give this a shot? Well, it was scary <laughs> for me. Um, yeah, um, the uh, valley was small. There were not a lot of wineries. Um, we ended up being the first uh, estate Cabernet Sauvignon exclusively. Um, most other wineries at that time were making other varietals. And um, he uh, definitely decided uh, that um, he wanted to uh, not uh, be on uh, the Napa Valley floor, but he wanted uh, to have the vineyards uh, in the hills. And... Um, he came, and, and uh, realtors showed him all around uh, throughout Napa Valley. And when he saw this little piece on Diamond Mountain Road, he knew this was it. Yeah, this is a, um, we're, t- we're talking with the, the lovely Boots Bronstein, the owner of Diamond Creek Vineyard. And uh, we're talking about both Boots' experience and her late husband, Al Bronstein, so uh, involved and uh, associated with Napa Valley. Let's talk about this in the 60s. First off, you're telling me, you guys come up there, Boots. You and Al, and, and Al decides he wants to plant Cabernet, and that wasn't the norm? They weren't planting Cabernet in Napa at that time in the 60s? Well, no, no, no. There was there was definitely a planting of Cabernet Sauvignon, but not as far north as Calistoga. So Calistoga, we hear the great ca- nowadays people are grabbing Calistoga. Wow, this is wonderful Cabernet. And then he sees this property, and it's on a mountain road. They must have thought you were crazy for wanting to plant uh, grapes, you know, put a vineyard on a mountainside. Well, maybe so, but he got some uh, good uh, feedback. Um, of course Andre he did. Telechef, who, uh, whoa, whoa, oh. really? And, and <laughs> Chelichev was involved, and he's, what did he tell you and Al? 
Well, Al went to him because he was really the guru at that time. I mean, he was so knowledgeable. He was making fabulous wine at BV, and he said, you know, Andre, I want to make Cabernet. Where would you go? And Andre said, I'd go up to Calistoga. I really think that that's going to be a place that's going to produce fabulous Cabernet. And so Al said, okay. Wow. And um, so he came up, and uh, when he saw this piece of property, uh, Al was a extremely creative man, and he, he saw things immediately, and he, he just saw that um, I hope that some of your listeners will maybe someday come visit us, but we're kind of in a bowl. What do you mean? And when, well, um, we don't have a view, except we have a view of vineyards. That's good. And so uh, we don't have a view of the valley. We're kind of hidden. When you come up Diamond Mountain Road, you kind of have to come into us to see our vineyards and um so when he saw this piece of property he said i want it he had no idea how many acres he could uh grow uh plant and um he just he, this was something that he just felt would be the right place for us what business were and, you uh, you uh, boots uh, you and al in in southern california what business did you leave to come to napa he was uh, a wholesaler of proprietary drugs, not that kind. So, uh, aspirin, <laughs> and so uh, you guys weren't you weren't selling it on the streets. You were selling aspirin. We understand totally. Yes, with your right. Yes, but and, but and, how did he get so the forth. how did you get the winemaking knowledge? I mean, time and time again, we hear about everybody talking to their friends and neighbors. Like you're talking about the great Andrei Chelichev from uh, BV uh, Vineyards giving you advice. Did he? You really kind of learn as you went along making the wine, or did you kind of have oh, an idea? No question about it. He did take some classes at Davis, but Al was not the winemaker. I have to tell you that uh -huh. he never. Uh, said he was. Uh, we uh, have had only two winemakers. We're going to have our 40th anniversary next year. Oh. Our first release of wine was in 1972. Our first winemaker was Jerry Looper. And our second winemaker that's been with us now for many years is Phil Steinschreiber. Wow. And uh, so we feel very fortunate that in all these years we have a consistency because we've only had two winemakers. Al was very knowledgeable about winemaking because he did take classes. Yeah, you guys are, I'm telling you, this is, uh, this is the, some of the holy grail of great uh, Cabernet, especially in the Calistoga area and in the mountainside, Diamond Creek Vineyard. Boots Bronstein is with us. Boots, can you hang in there with us? Because we want to find a little bit more about the wine jab. I know they're hard to find. And uh, we're talking with Boots Bronstein and we're also about her great late husband, Al Bronstein. Diamond Creek, that is a name to remember. We continue straight ahead on the weekend edition of What's Cooking. Come to Yountville, California, in the heart of the Napa Valley, and in